Hello there, Chris P. Williams here with another Affinity Photo tutorial looking at developing black and white images in the Develop Persona. So we'll just crack on quickly and I'll open a recent image I've been working on. And this is a photograph of some locks which I took in Venice, uh, the locking type of locks, not the canal type of lock, obviously. And I'm just going to go to my crop tool now to make this picture a little bit more presentable. I'm going to use a drop down to select the 10 by 8 and you can see Affinity Photo has automatically selected Portrait Crop. So I'm just going to rotate that because I want a landscape crop. And I'm going to bring that in from the top corner and in from the bottom corner. I'm going to come in quite a bit because I also want to rotate this image. Now we can see here this iron bar is out of line. and You can tell that by the edge of the crop tool. Uh, so I'm just going to rotate my image just to bring that into line so it looks a little bit more presentable. And I'm going to use this area here of my grid as a, as a rule of thirds marker. And I'm just going to zoom out slightly and drop that down. I just want to get this cluster of locks in a position where the viewer's eye is drawn to that rather than anything else. And looking at the right side, I can see these interesting curved bars. I just want them to look like they're coming in from the corners. So again, I just pull that one in slightly and the top is looking pretty good. And this line of locks as well is falling clearly on the top third. And that's quite, quite effective. And the line of this lock here as well is falling down the left third. And I think that's looking pretty good. Maybe we can bring some more of this bar in on the left slightly just to thicken that border because it's quite a dark area. I don't like having bright edges on the edges of my black and white photos. So I think that's quite a good selection. So I'm just going to press enter now to commit to that. Okay, now I'm going to go to the tones palette. And if you drop down, you can see there's a black and white palette. I'm just going to check that. And all of a sudden we get a black and white image. Now we're still presented with these color bars, red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Each one of these will affect the tones within the image in as much they'll make the colors darker or lighter depending on where you position them on the sliders. And just to demonstrate this now, I'm just going to grab this red slider and I'm going to take it to the left. And you can see all the red colors in the original photograph are now being affected by that slider. So it sounds a bit odd when you're editing black and white photographs to be thinking in color. So if I take that back to its start point and turn it off, for instance, you can see here this slight red tones in the edges of these bars. And in fact, the rust on the metal as well has red tones. And this lock here has a lot of red and there's red here and red here. So again, if I return and demonstrate that again, so we're looking at this area here, this area down here and the rust on the bars. So watch them drop and get darker as we move our slider to the left. Now obviously if that's too much, it's had a little bit of nastiness in this much it creates artifacts. So I think if we bring it to about 20%, I think that's a good starting point. And now we can look at our green slider. Now you can see it's not having much of an effect on our photograph. It's affecting this bronzed area up here and it's affecting this lock here. So if you keep your eye on those two areas when I move a slider, you can then make a decision as to which looks more pleasing. So I think in this instance, taking that up just above the 100% mark has a positive effect on this lock and it doesn't bring that area out too much, which is not what I want really because that's in my background and I don't want it to detract. So right, we can now move on to the blue slider and I'm gonna move that to the left and we can see here it has a much more dramatic effect on our image, especially on this lock here. I think it's doing something nice there. So I'm just going to drop that down a little bit more. And it sort of takes your eye away from that lock in a way. And it has a nice darkening effect on our background. So yeah, I won't do it too much. I think that should just about be enough. And we can now look at our cyan slider. And again, I don't expect this to be overly dramatic. And you can see it's only really affecting this lock here, which is which is good for us in this instance, because now I can bring that lock right down and really make it disappear into the rest of the photograph. It's there as a leading line. And as are the locks on the left, they're leading your eye into this cluster of locks in the middle. So I think that's maybe a little bit too much. So yeah, I think that's that's good enough. All right, so we just move on to the magenta slider. I'll move that to the left. And again, it's not having a dramatic effect on our photograph. 
also if I turn it to a right, it sort of it only seems to be affecting this area here and this area here. So in that instance, I'm going to take it down to the left just to darken our background that little bit more. And like I said, to keep our attention on this cluster of locks in the middle. And the final slider is yellow. Let's take that to the left. Wow, that has a really dramatic effect because I'll just take us back to 100 and we'll return to our color image. You can see there's quite a lot of yellow tone in this overall photograph. So I'll turn that back on and we'll drop that because of the nice effect it's having on the background, although it, it is at the cost of the locks in the middle. So what I'll try and do now, try and counteract that by going to our overlays tool, clicking on my adjustment brush, dropping the softness down to about 4% and increasing the brush size. And then what I'm going to do is just put um, a mask in this area here. I've clicked three times now around that area, so I've got a pretty thick mask going on. And we'll return to our basics palette. And now if I make an adjustment here, for instance, if I increase the brightness, you can see it's mostly only affecting the area where we had our mask. So I'll pump up my brightness just to bring those locks out to where they were whilst keeping our background dark. And once you're happy, you can return to the overlays palette and just click on master. And now again, we're editing the whole photograph and not just that localized selection we made with our overlay brush. Okay, I'm gonna return now to our basics palette and we can start looking at the contrast of this image. I'm gonna make sure my black and my highlights are on and we can see we've got a lot of blown highlights. And if I was gonna print this image, that would be an issue because when you print onto photographic paper, if the light shines on it in a certain direction and you look at it from the opposing angle, you'll get patches of white shining through where there's no actual ink on the paper and that has an undesired effect on your prints. So I'm just gonna go to my shadows and highlights now and bring my highlights down just to try and get rid of those. You can see there they've gone, but that's a little bit too much. So I'll increase that slightly and that specular highlight is still there. So let's have a look at dropping down my brightness. And I think that's done the job. I'll bring my highlights back up. And I think we're there. Right. I'm just gonna turn off my highlight markers now and I'm gonna to return to my tones palette. And I still, I'm still not happy really with this background. It's looking a little bit too bright. So I'm gonna try and drop my blue slightly to see what effect that has. And I think that might do the job. I'll drop my cyans and my magentas and we'll drop our yellow slightly more. Yep, I think that's good enough. So let's go back to our basics palette now. I'm just gonna increase my contrast. Maybe not as much as that. Let's, let's put a subtle contrast on there and then we'll boost my clarity slider. And I think that's looking pretty good there. We can see here the main point of interest is this cluster of locks, which is which is what we wanted. And just to enhance that now a little bit more, I'm gonna go back to my overlay brush. I'm gonna click on the overlay we made earlier, which is the cluster of locks. And I'm gonna to go to my detail slider and I'm gonna turn on my detail refinement and I'm gonna increase my radius about 20 will do a job and then we'll slide this slider to the right and you can see there it has a an overly dramatic effect on if I zoom in it has an overly dramatic effect on those locks obviously we don't want that much of an effect so I'm just going to drop that down now to a more realistic level and I think that's good enough and I'm going to press control and zero or command and zero on a Mac and if I turn that off and back on again you can see the effect has been quite subtle but it's again enough to draw your eye towards the center of the photograph and we're now going to go to our overlays palette and return back to our master layer so we're now affecting the whole photograph again we're almost there so what i'm going to do i'm just going to go to my lens tool now and we're going to go to post crop vignette and i'm just going to introduce a subtle vignette to the photograph just around the outside edges 
that's a little bit too much and we're going to increase the scale what I'll do, I'll just pump up the hardness now as you can see what's happening a bit more clearly so if I scale this you can see there, that's our vignette and I only want it really to affect this area around the edge, so now I can soften that up again and we can play around with our intensity slider a little bit too much and I think minus 7, that should do the job because you can see now that our eye is getting drawn towards the cluster of locks and the rest of our image isn't too distracting and we'll just go back to our basics palette now just to have a quick look and a quick play to see if we can make any more subtle improvements although I think we're almost there so I increase my clarity yeah I think we're there so all we need to do now is to click on the develop button to take us into the photo persona where we can make other edits to this photograph if we need to I'm not going to do much more to this picture other than I'm going to show you a little trick now for creating a border and there are other ways of doing this but I quite like this one and this is a case of pressing control or command on a Mac and click so you control and click the little icon on the layer to get this selection and then we'll go to our select tool and we'll go to grow and shrink or the shortcut is control and B and you can just move a slider to the left and select your frame size or your border size and I think that will do a job so I'm just going to click apply and now I'm going to press shift and control and I or shift command and I on a Mac to invert that selection so you can see now I've now got two lots of marching ants and I'm going to click on add pixel layer which is this small checkered icon to the bottom right corner of the layers palette and that gives me a new layer I go to my flood fill tool making sure my color is white if it's not just press X to swap black and white over and hover in between the marching ants and just left click and that fills the area with white and control and D to get rid of those marching ants and there you have it a quick border for your black and white photograph so I hope you found that tutorial useful and keep watching and subscribe to my channel thanks very much bye